friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. This week is, we're filming from the past, so you're watching this in the past. Well, no, you're watching it in the future. But this is past us. Yeah. How's it, how's it going over there? <laughs> Good. Last week was pretty crazy, right? <laughs> I don't even know. How are you doing this week? Well, it's the same week, so... Not so good. So the same, I guess. <laughs> I'm not... Who's to say how I'll be feeling next week? That's true. I hope by next week I'm doing better. I'm not doing bad. I'm just doing just all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not doing bad. I'm just stressed. Yeah. Or when am I not stressed? On vacaciones. What was I going to say? Um, a, a new show I've watched since the last time we filmed. I just finished Ted Lasso. I cried. It was a really good ending. I actually was surprised I liked the ending as much as I did because there was one character I hated all of season three. And then in the end of it, I was like, never mind. I love him. So I really hope they just spin off. I don't know if they will, though. Yeah. Can't comment on it, but I'm sure it was great. <laughs> have no idea. Still watching but Modern sure Family. Okay. As I should. Who's your favorite character in Modern Family? It's a tie between Cam and Phil. Me too. Those yeah. are my favorites. I agree. It's a tie. They're both so funny. I know. It kills Honestly, me. Honestly, everyone on the principal cast yeah, is really every, funny. Everybody is so funny. But those two are my favorites too. Same. Yeah. I was thinking about how the dad, I tell everyone this that I can. He's a U of O alum. So go Ducks. Yeah. You've told me multiple times. I just have to make sure that. everyone knows. There aren't that many that people know of. So <laughs> you're telling me. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's graduated from my school. Not one famous person, huh? I know there's one. You. <laughs> Stupid. But yeah, we're a little stressed. Well, I'm not as stressed. You are really stressed. Does anyone else feel like that when it's time to go on vacation? Do you stress the whole week before? I stress every second of every hour until I get on that plane and I get there. And even then, I have to go and I have to check in and I have to get the car and I have to like, and then I don't stress anymore. <laughs> <laughs> until then. Just for good things. Do you think that's why? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's this, uh, other than my mental illness, it's just like my inability to let go of things. Sure. Okay. If I don't plan them, how do I know they're going to work out? Mm. And then I plan everything and then I'm stressed out. Yeah. Lose, lose. You did get everything done that you wanted to get done though. Like I didn't. For like the you, most part. Like you got your eyebrows done. I didn't. True. And I was like, I don't care. That's fine. True. <laughs> I was like, as long as I get my lashes and my nails done, I don't care. You know I, mean? I feel that. And I almost didn't get my lashes done, yeah. but I got squeezed in by our girl. I Melissa. Know. Shout out, Melissa. Um, but yeah, I actually got some extra stuff done, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Bunch of errands. Yeah, but there was some stuff I did not finish, which I wish I did. And my mom was like, my mom's so funny because she... Like she literally was telling me like, you act like there's no stores where we're going. <laughs> and I'm like, that's true. But still, you never know. I just like, don't want to have to think about it. If I don't like, if I get it done now, I won't have to worry about well, it. Well, you did. So then even more so there should be, there's no some stress. stuff I didn't get done and I'm a little upset about it. But like what? I needed to get some toiletries and stuff. Oh, they don't have those there. <laughs> That's what I've heard. That's why my mom was like, you act like there's no stores. They don't do that there at all. You could you could land the plane like when we get there and you could Instacart it to your house and it'll be there before we get there. That is true. As far as I know. Or you could order it now and schedule it to be delivered. That's what I did. I had groceries delivered to my house. Mm. And I gave that guy a big fat tip because he had to carry a case of water up to my. <laughs> I know. I always tip Beer, really heavy, yeah. especially for Instacart. Instacart is like my most used app besides DoorDash. Taking away my my responsibility of having to go to the store. Life changing. Uh, just that's why I feel about Target. That's a privilege. That's why I feel sure about Target drive up orders. Yep. But then I realized I can't see everything in Target if I'm on the app. I gotta go in. Yeah, it's like you type in stuff and then um I learned that the hard way. Like you type in stuff and you're like, oh my god, that's so cute. I, I definitely want that. And then you go and it's not available. So then you, you, I started sorting by my store and then there's nothing. I know. <laughs> or pick up. We were like, yeah. well, this is available online. Well, I need it right now. So I want to get rid of that feature. <laughs> How do I get rid of it where it tells me you could order it? I don't want to order it. 
Are you fucking dumb? Yeah. That's like <laughs> two weeks ago. I tried to be super proactive and order like new, like some more summer clothes. Cause like, Oh yeah. All of my shit is so old. Like f- my staples, like jeans and shorts. Like I haven't bought new jeans or shorts in fucking years. Like I don't remember the last time I did, even though I have a bunch of them. Like I, I'm like, a, I just can't throw things away. <laughs> I need to throw shit out. So like I tried to order a bunch of new stuff from Abercrombie and literally all of it like was way too big for me because I don't apparently I was like a fucking idiot when I was putting everything in my cart. Well, and it's hard to order clothes. I mean, I'm sure everyone can relate to this online, especially as a bigger girl. Like if you're an 18 at this store, I'm a 22 at this store. Like it's completely different. Well, And it's just like, especially jeans. Yeah. So everyone told, everyone has told me the Abercrombie like curve love line is like, really good for curvy girls so you went in store do they have them in store yeah oh they do they don't have as many though i don't like they do online i don't want to go there like if they have like a hundred online in the store they have like 30 oh that's not bad yeah so it's not it's not terrible but like there were i had way more shorts so like this is what i did i sized up because i assume abercrombie white girl sizing so i just i like added two sizes to what my regular size is two yeah that's crazy because it's jeans i know but i'll do i'll do one not two i always do two especially for jeans yeah and I even then and even then it sometimes doesn't fit yeah ask me how many zara jeans i have in there with fucking tags on them i know because like i buy them because it's supposed to be my size it doesn't even go on my legs mm-hmm. it's fucking stupid so anyways ordered a whole bunch of shit all of it got delivered none of it fit me yeah so then i had to take all of it back to the store and return it and it was uh, relatively easy at that point. But you got it all. Um, I returned it. I yeah. never. I I almost never returned stuff. Yeah. Um, but this one you did. That's what I'm saying. So I was at least proud of that. So. <laughs> but the the sizing is so real for bigger girls. Like yeah. if you're if you're bigger than an eight, good luck. You know what I'm saying? I know. Especially buying fucking jeans. I was an eight in the fifth grade. I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> I remember I was a zero when I was in fifth grade. Okay. No, wait. What are you showing off? I thought you said eighth grade. No, in fifth grade, I was an eight. Mm. You probably were a zero. You're a little beanpole for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't have your girl spur yet. For a little. That's true. So that's probably. true. I, I was true. I was. I don't think I've ever been a zero. I was only a zero. I think I remember it being a zero. I remember because our mom had bought me a promotion outfit for my fifth grade promotion. Mm -hmm. And I only remember it was a zero because I remember thinking, what a stupid size number. Like, that's not even a number. I mean, zero is a number, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Me being like, (laughs) how illogical. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Numerically speaking. Yeah. yeah. Technically, logistically speaking. I know one time mommy was at the store and she was buying bathing suits and she was FaceTiming me. This was recently. Mm -hmm. She's like, do you like any of these? And I'm like, I want that one. It's so cute. It's blue crush core. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, um, she, I was like, what size are those bottoms? She goes, Oh, it's an extra small. I'm like, Oh, well, if they had a double extra small, that would fit me. But (laughs) just the extra small is way too big for me. Sorry, dude. I can't. (sighs) Isn't that just the luck? What do you, what do you think extra small bathing suit bottoms would look like? This. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm saying on your body, they wouldn't even get on my body. <laughs> I don't even think you'd see them. I put you, them on. You don't see them. They'd see be on. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be on. They'd like be on modeled on my ankles. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, I'd pull them up and it would go like, yeah, like the when it's the seams are tearing and then it would just. <laughs> That's my favorite way to wear my shirts. I bend down and put my knees in them, <laughs> or I put my fists in it, fists in them, and like real push out, rip all the Dude. seams. Billy Good. hates, he hates when I do this, but I like, I'm like a, I'm someone who hates having to try shit on. Yeah. Um, so like, I'll just like put one leg in, like I'll put one leg okay, in. Okay. But she's not describing it. We're at the store. So yeah. let's just say we're at Target. Yeah. She wants to try on these jeans, but she doesn't want to go to the dressing room. <laughs> yeah. So she's fully dressed in the store. She'll stick her fully dressed leg in the jean pant leg uh-huh. in the middle of the store. And I'll pull it up and I'll know if it'll fit me. And then you save time. That's why I'm like, I'm all about efficiency. So you like, know that, like myth? I'm not stripping down to my skivvies if it, they're not even going to go up my fucking ass. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I know. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I agree. 
I have one leg. Even sometimes I'll go like this. Yeah. And I'll be like, nope. Nope. I'll put my hand in the jean leg yeah. and, I'll, and I'll, the jeans and I'll go like this. I'm yeah. Like, nope. nope. And that's how you know. That's the life of a bigger girl, <laughs> dude. Like, you know that thing where they're like, oh, if you take the waist of the pants and put them around your that's neck. That's such a lie. You're that's a lie. My neck. There's no way. There's <laughs> no way. My neck is as big as my waist. That, there's no way. That okay who am i jessica rabbit you know what i'm saying like there's no fucking <laughs> there's way no like, way you're telling me i got a 22 inch waist you're out of your fucking mind <laughs> there's <laughs> just no way there's no way so then if with that logic if i took my necklace i could put it around my waist <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah there's no way no there's absolutely just like they no say way. like from like your inner el- your elbow pit that's what we call it to your wrist that's the size of your foot there's no way my foot's that big do you think that one's true Oh, I'll test her yeah. right now. Put your, your little tiny feet up there. That one might be true. You think so? It just looks No one big. look at my forearms. <laughs> it just looks big. Like perspective. I feel like we've talked about this before, guys, but so I'm 5'4 and Drew's six feet tall. Yeah. We have the same size feet. So yeah. on me, they're a little bit too big. And on Drew, they're way too small. Yeah. Like today she was trying on Birkenstocks. And I was like, I don't like how tiny those make your feet look. It looks <sighs> gross. Some of you have noticed that though, like when I wear my Jordans and I, you can see a full body pic of me, mm-hmm. they're like, your feet look so small. Mm-hmm. And then for me, I have to make sure the shoes don't look like I'm wearing my dad's shoes. Cause sometimes <laughs> nine and a half shoes will look like that on my feet. Like we're both a nine and a half, nine and a half, sometimes a 10, depending yeah. on the, on the size of the shoe. But my feet are white as fuck. Oh, we've talked about this wide flat feet as Drew describes me and Drew's are small and dainty. I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> Anyways. You know what? God doesn't give with both hands. It's true. I, uh, the neck thing I've tried, I'm like, that only applies to a certain race. I just <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way that applies to minorities. Like if you put both your fists around my neck, right? Uh, like I would think by that logic, you should be able to put that around <laughs> my fucking waist. waist. Yeah. Or like they go like the tiniest part of your weight. Nothing. Where? A- Nothing about me is tiny. I could tell you that right now. Not even my belly button. That's not no. tiny either. There's my no my my ring size is fucking big. Like on what finger? All of them, dude. So it's it's insane. What's like, your ring finger? My all of my fingers, like my general ring size is like an eight or a nine. Me too. Which is fucking big. Is like, it really? Yes, because some people New are insecurity like, alert. <laughs> <laughs> New insecurity alert. Unlocked. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm like a five, six must be fucking nice. But see, my fingers are so skinny at the top. And I don't know if like it just they're just big body bends on the bottom. But like every stylist I've ever worked with has been like, are you sure this is your ring size? And I'm like, yeah, because it's like, I don't know. Is it a man's ring size? I have no fucking I idea. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. About an eight or a nine. Yeah, same. So when I buy rings, I usually go for a nine so they can fit on most all my fingers. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Fucking same. That's ridiculous. It is pretty There's ridiculous. No, that's why I said there ain't nothing small about me. Mm-hmm. No, you know what's the smallest thing on me? Your feet. No. Well, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say something, but never mind. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> See? What? I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> what my teeth (laughs) see see i fucking knew it she goes "Mm, never mind yep okay (laughs) what were you gonna say my teeth oh okay then i don't feel bad (laughs) we're on the same page i don't even think your teeth are that little they're not in proportion to my face no like they, they don't look like where I'm like, ooh, you know? Yeah, no, they don't you look... Just got, compared to the rest of our family, I have you have smaller small teeth. teeth yeah. yeah, Everyone's got fucking gnashers except me. Mm-hmm. Like, I think all of us... I wish I had bigger teeth. Like, if you took to all of the skin off our faces, like me, mommy, daddy, and Donnie, I think our teeth would look like those, like... Yeah. Those little toys. Which is so nice. I, I love, I love, like, people, like, big teeth. Big, that, full body teeth. Yeah. I think teeth are so nice when they look bigger like that. I wish my teeth were bigger. Um, you want to? If serve- anyone, if anyone says I have American Girl doll teeth, I will kill myself. So don't do that. Cause I don't. I feel like those are teeth that you can see when your mouth is open and you can see the top yeah. too. I don't think you have American Girl doll teeth. 
No, I absolutely don't. I think Squid does. Squid has no teeth. It's kind he of He has no teeth, but he has the sharpest teeth. Like you can't see his teeth at all. Do you think he has like rows of teeth like a shark? <laughs> it feels like it <laughs> when he bites me. He doesn't bite me when he's he, been like, being really nice to me recently. When he I nips. think he's up to no good. I don't trust him. That's because he thinks that's the lady who chases me. Like every time I, I see haven't Jason. chased him in so long. That doesn't mean he forgot. That's why he gets excited when he sees you. Yeah. Because he knows he thinks you're gonna play with I him. I know at the gym the other day, um, Billy was in front of me with him in the stroller yeah. and I was on the on the stairmaster and waving at him and he was all <laughs> But yeah, that's uh that's our segment on body shaming ourselves. So um <laughs> Yeah, kay. well uh I will say that's not an invitation to comment on my body. I know. Or my looks. Y'all, come on. I think that people get confused yeah. sometimes. So like I can call myself a, f- a wide flat foot bitch, but <laughs> I don't want to see you calling me that. Yeah. You can relate to it. And yeah. And, and many of you if, have, if you do, many of you have, but you are not allowed to comment on mine. And that's like, I made that joke on the Zach saying show about, about someone calling me walleye. And then everyone in the fucking comments on TikTok were like diagnosing me first of all. But second of all, like I wrote, like, I like how you bitches think like all of you people think that this was an invite to discuss my looks and it fucking wasn't like mm. just listen to the joke and laugh. Like yeah. you can, you can like empathize with me and be like, Oh my God, girl, that's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh my gosh, that would be my last thing. My last straw, whatever. Like that's silly. That's funny. But people like literally commenting on my looks. Like I promise you don't want to play that game with me. <laughs> are, pe- are people going onto your videos and being like, yeah, yeah, you can't, but not, they're not saying it in a way where like men are, but they're saying like, yeah, I could see it. You are kind of wall eyed. Are they yeah. saying that's crazy? And it's rude. It's like so rude. Like, and I know creators have talked about this before, but like, obviously like us, like our, our bodies are not, um, first of all, subject to commentary, especially as far because as, like, we don't make content about our body. Yeah. yeah. Like our, our content is not centered around our bodies one, but two, like, I feel like there's this over familiarity. Sometimes mm-hmm. people develop where they think like, oh, she's, she's a funny bitch. I'm, I'm going to join in and be like, Hey, you fatty. And you're not allowed. <laughs> well, it's not only you're not allowed, but I don't know you. Like, no, you're not allowed. I, I'm <laughs> telling you, no, I'm you're not yeah. allowed to comment on my body and make fun of what I look like. Mm-hmm. If you're a fan of mine, if you're a man, you're going to do it no matter what, no matter yeah. what I fucking say. But like, if you're a man who hates me, but like, if you're a fan of a creator and they make fun of themselves in, in regards to their looks, I highly advise that you don't join in. It's not, it's not cool. You know what I mean? Like we can laugh and we can make the jokes, but like at the same time, just like understand there are lines that you shouldn't cross. And I know other creators have talked about that too, but I just want to make sure like, I'm going to make fun of what I look like. Cause it's funny and I love myself enough to do it. Just like if you, you know, we're all a little self-deprecating. Yeah. If yeah. you're like, if you're making fun of yourself, what if I started making fun of that too? How would you feel? Yeah, exactly. That's not cool. So yeah, I see. feel like people who follow us on here know that, but yeah, just a blanket. That's statement. not even really for y'all. That's like for the masses. Yeah. Like that's what happens on TikTok when a bunch of random uh, women find me. It's like the, when I started saying like responding to some of those comments, like they were women who don't like me and don't follow me. Mm. And they just were like, yeah, you're right. She is kind of a fucking ugly bitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like That's, that's weird. And yeah. that's rude. Anywho. So there's that. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at ZocDoc. So there are better ways to get the answers you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. So go to ZocDoc.com slash two idiot girls and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash two idiot girls zocdoc.com slash two idiot girls now back to the episode 
All right. So on that note, we're going to get into some of these advice questions. This will be the last advice thing that we do Yes. for now. We'll probably do it quarterly. I feel like that's a good check in. I think so. With everyone. Yeah. Okay. So this first one's from, I think she pronounces her name Paola. And she said, how did you guys deal with homesickness while in college? I'm graduating from high school next year and I want to pursue art and move abroad for work in college. My mom's family is so supportive and have pushed me to pursue my dreams and ambitions. But I feel like I might regret that decision because I grew up pretty close to my mom and her family, especially my grandpa. I feel like I'm making the right decision by choosing to move away from my family to grow more as a person. Well, first, you are making the right decision. For Mm -hmm. sure you are. And you have a, a loving, supportive family. I think that's a great thing. Um, I think, especially now, like you're graduating from high school in this, in this day and age, like accessibility is so much easier now than it was when I was in college. Like we talked about on one of the other episodes, like we didn't have FaceTime like that. We didn't have like, um, even really social media wasn't nearly as Mm -hmm. interactive and, and, uh, like I said, accessible as it is today. So um, one thing that we did when we were in college is we, we had a standing date that we would always talk to each other, like, uh, call, especially like, since, I mean, if you're moving abroad, abroad, like another country, you're going to be in a different time zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was in a different time zone. They were in the same time zone, but I was in a different one. So we like picked a time, um, and a day that worked for all of us. And we would all like chat, like we would do a Skype. We do call. like, uh, I think we did Google hangouts. Yeah. Um, and we did uh, Skype a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, we had like a standing date and we would do it like Sundays at like 6 p.m. Yeah, something like that. Like, what? And only for like a little, but like just so we could all catch up. And that was like as we got busier, we would move it and stuff. But And that was fine and natural. But like that's a great start, right? Yeah, I mean, dealing with homesickness is very real. I think we talk about this every time, but you should... Um, focus on building a community where you're going mm-hmm. to school anyways with yeah. clubs and organizations and whatever that will help yeah. that will help with deal with the homesickness so that's why I talked about like when I first moved because I'm the oldest I had to go first mm-hmm. I called my mom every day like after every class I got out of for like mm-hmm. two full weeks and then she was like why aren't you making friends and going to lunch with your friends and yeah. whatever um, if you move in the residence halls we talked about this before they have activities go to them um, yeah and yeah that's those are all great ways to um, kind of like acclimate so you don't feel as alone. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I mean, also something that helped me if I was feeling homesick, like for example, um, my dad only ever listens to reggae like 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid growing up, um, I started to grow a distaste for it. Cause that's all my dad would ever play. Yeah, me too. Um, when I moved away though, mm-hmm. I missed my dad. I missed my family. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started listening to it when I felt sad and that made me feel better. And I fucking love reggae, like Island reggae. I love, that's like one of my favorite genres of music. So, and it's a very cultural tie to us too, but, um, that helped me like mm-hmm. watching movies or listening to music that reminded me of my family when I was feeling a little homesick And then also, like, don't be afraid to call and reach out. Like, whenever you feel sad, like, can't even tell you how many times I did that. Like, especially times when I was, like, really sick in school and stuff and I was alone Mm -hmm. in my room, I would call my mom and just cry. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I got my first UTI in college. uh, Didn't know what was happening to me. Called my mom sobbing from the toilet because I was in pain. Um, Don't recommend them. Zero out of 10 UTIs. Don't, don't recommend. get them. They're not. People say they're fun, but they're not. Don't rec- If I could give this place zero stars, I would. <laughs> That's how every Yelp review starts. <laughs> but alas, I have to put one. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to settle with one. <laughs> That's how I. <laughs> so you feel about UTIs. That's how. That's my review for UTIs. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just need your family. Sometimes you just want to talk to them. Um when you're away and if you have like a really close relationship with them. So yeah, I think that's my advice. What about you? 
Same. Yeah, I think having little reminders around you that remind you of your family. And I think something I, I tried to focus on a lot, because I think my dad told me this, was like, you're going to school for a reason and it's so mm-hmm. temporary. I, I can't emphasize that enough to you. Like after my freshman year, I felt like then all of a sudden I was a senior. It flies by so fast. Just like yeah, high school. It does. It goes by, it goes by super duper fast. So I fast. think just making the most out of the time that you have there, that's how like, just different ways to navigate homesickness. Like stay, honestly staying busy and focusing on you. Yep. Those Absolutely. are my um, ideas. But I'm super excited for you and I hope you do congrats. really well. And congrats for next year. They're going to go to college. Yeah. Nice. Okay, this next one's from Lissa. She said, I'm single and searching, but everyone I've talked to lately has given me the total ick. I even had the best state of my life, and this man got me two dozen roses, but I just got the ick no matter who. I've been single for three years. You'd figure it wouldn't be this bad. Am I doing something wrong? Am I too picky? Is this my single era, even though I've been single for years? Help. I mean, it it just, it depends. I, I feel like... I don't think you're too picky, but I do think, well, first I'll, I'll, I'll tackle one half of it. Um, if you're getting the yik that easily, then that person's not the person. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Um, when you find the right person, like y- if you find a nick, it'll be down the road. And even then you're like, that could constitute as a nick, but it doesn't bother me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you get so icked out that you like, you just dip out immediately. Like that person is not a person you're supposed to be with. You know what I'm saying? Like clearly the attraction, um, both physically and like intellectually is not strong enough to override something like a Nick. You know what I'm saying? Um, when it's strong enough, you're going to be like, that's weird, but yeah, if your body has like this like violent reaction to yeah, what's happening, then, then you just yeah. don't like them that much, I and think that's that okay. You're saying you got on a good date and he he did all this stuff or whatever, but you still got the ick. I feel like that's a ref, like a projection of how you think of yourself almost. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like what was the ick? Was it the the roses? No, she didn't put it in here. Okay, well then it depends on what it was because like. If he did that and then he's cutting his toenails in the car, then yeah. Well, like if I just mean like he could have done that and then done something later on in the night that she was like, you know what I'm saying? And like, again, the attraction is just not strong enough. Yeah, that's, and that's true. Okay. It's, over, it's not a beige flag. Yeah, it's not a beige flag. It's not a kissing toll. So. <laughs> but if it was the roses, <laughs> then that is on you. Mm-hmm. And then. To me, I think that's when I tell people, like, why do you think love has to hurt or be aloof in order for it to be real? Because sometimes when it's awesome, Mm -hmm. uh, people struggle to accept that because they're like, that's not that's not real because I've had these feelings before and I'm going to find something that I don't like about you because I'm going to I'm going to run. Literally you. (laughs) Literally me. But not to that extent, but I think of like when you knew you were in love, like it's scary. It is. It's terrifying. And it's also like that if that was what it was or it wasn't anything at all and you found a reason to run, then that is on you. Mm. And I wouldn't say anything's wrong with you necessarily. I just think that's what that says to me is that you've had poor experiences in the past and your feelings are valid. And when things get a little too real and things seem a little too great you find a reason to ruin it or to run away from it Mm -hmm. because then at least you can control the ending, right? You're like, I chose to leave because falling in love is wonderful. And it's also a huge risk, like in many, many, many different ways. That's why a lot of people run from it for their entire lives because it's terrifying Mm -hmm. to love someone and commit to someone and be there for someone. But, um, it really just depends on what the ick was, if that's what it was. But that's why I said it's kind of a two-parter. It depends. Yeah, it depends. There's layers there. But I think, too, in general, with dating, I feel like there needs to be a lot more self-reflection done before you're going out there. Sure, In yeah. terms of figuring out who you are and what you like. Because maybe you're just agreeing to go on dates with people because you want to just say, or not even say, but you just want to be able to go on dates. And, and that's fine. Yeah. If that's but what you want. If you're, it's the same thing keeps happening. Maybe there is some self-reflection that needs to be done, but also I don't think you can be too picky. No way. Do you know Especially what I mean? Especially if you date men. Yeah. No I don't feel like, way. I feel like we need to be pickier. pickier. I don't think people really. are picky enough yeah. to be real. So I don't think it's that. I just think maybe like, maybe there's something that you could be doing for yourself that would make you feel more comfortable or have more fun on these dates. But if they're just a bad bunch, it's just a bad bunch. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And like, 
It, I always think like when you're dating, if you see something and you don't like it, bye. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, what if he's a great guy? I don't care because I saw something I didn't like. Mm. Bye. That's what I think. I, I That's how I dated. One thing, I'm out. Mm. No thanks. I'm good. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Like yeah. men try to demonize women, but that's literally because they expect women to overlook shit all the time. And they yeah. do. And they do a I, lot. I do think that there's a lot of really wonderful men out there or partners, whatever you're looking for. I mean, yeah. Billy's a great example, mm -hmm. but everyone's like, well, you know, how do you find him? And it reminds me of <clears throat> all the time. That's like one of my most asked questions. Not to bring up the show jury duty. Cause I'm going to bring it up as much as I can, but the main character, they couldn't believe how good of a person he was. Like they did, they put all these weird people around him and he was so sweet the entire time. And they were saying, I couldn't believe it. And I saw someone saying like, I know so many men like that. No, you don't. So many. No, men? you don't. No, you don't. Come on. Why would the show would not? If we all knew ten men like that, that show would not exist. Yeah. Like there's well, like, there wouldn't be a fascination with it. Yeah. Like it, it would be real commonplace. Mm -hmm. It would be like, oh well, yeah, of course he's nice because he's a man. Said nobody ever. Yeah, I saw. I saw a TikTok about that. Well, there's no like. There's a character they had one of the, the, the guys play where he loves to make inventions, but he's really weird and off putting. Mm -hmm. Like he'll write him notes. They have like a conjoining room, yeah, and yeah, he'll yeah. write Ronald notes and send them under the door. And Ronald responds to every single one, being patient and kind. And the guy makes these chair out of crutches, and then it's embarrassing in the courthouse. Yeah. But then Ronald's like, I showed him the movie A Bug's Life because it's about a guy who makes inventions and is pretty misunderstood. But I told him I believe in him. And the whole show is him like pumping him up. That's sweet. But that's what I'm saying. Who, uh, the uh, first person I thought of was Human Billy. Yeah. That's something Billy would do. Yeah. And be yes. like, I like inventions. And then he would talk about, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there are men that exist like that, but they're not as common as everyone says. So if you're weeding through a bunch of shitty ones because you want to find the is right what one, it is, you know? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. And I think <laughs> you're five feet from gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're you're that meme where where he stops digging and there's there's diamonds back there. You know what I mean? Like, and another guy's still digging. <laughs> but I think too, like, it, it's just with men, I'm like, I don't, if you just like, if he just like did something that you fucking hated and only did it once when you hung out for him like five hours and you just never want to see him again, who cares? Yeah. Who gives a fuck? You don't owe anyone anything. No, yeah. especially a stranger. Like that person is a stranger. You went on a date with him one time. You hung out with him once. That's a stranger. You it doesn't make you a bad person because you don't like what he's doing. Not right? at all. Agree. And if you don't like it, keep your standards high. Someone will meet them. But at the same time, you got to pay attention to what it is you're thinking and feeling and mm -hmm. make sure that you're you're checking in with yourself, too, because maybe maybe sometimes you are running and maybe it's maybe it's a valid reason why you would but not necessarily the best choice for you if that makes sense so it really just depends on you but i'm sure you're doing a great job keep it up you got it okay this next one's from hallie she said hey guys i love your podcast and everything you do i just had a baby nine months ago congratulations oh my gosh congrats and i just started feeling like myself again i used to do a lot of self-care and was kind of a bad bitch and i miss doing all the things i used to do to look good and i feel like i've had a glow down do you think it's possible to have a glow up well into your 20s you're looking at her sister into your 20s you're fine i'm not joking i'm gonna insert a photo here of me in 2021 mm. that's what i used to look like and that is because i was unhappy i was lost and i was really really scared and i was like i think the most depressed i'd ever been mm. it doesn't even look like me did and you're in your 20s yeah you're fine you have and so you much just, time ahead of you you also had a baby so you're fucking good you're chilling i think that I think that too, like that's a pressure that we put on ourselves um, as women, but just as, as people who can give birth in general, mm -hmm. there's like this immense pressure that is put on us both directly and indirectly of like, you know, like snapping back, like quote, snapping back or like bouncing back or whatever. Not the fuck. giving up on your body. Yeah. yeah whatever the fuck they want to characterize it as when really it's just like an aggressive and violent form of, um, fat phobia, mm -hmm. but also like you just gave birth to a person. Hey, you're good. Mm. Take 
your time, babe. Like, however long it takes for you to get back to you, I think you're owed that and you deserve it. Mm -hmm. But I also think, too, like, getting back, looking, looking a certain way is one thing, but getting back to taking care of yourself, I think, is more important. I think so, too. Um, as, as like, you know, people who give anyone who can give birth. Right. Um, it's like, obviously you have, you bring a child into this world and then your whole life is about them as it should be, which is a great thing. But at the same time, you also matter. So like what your wants, needs and ambitions and dreams on a larger scale, all of that still matters even after you give birth Mm -hmm. to a child. Right. So I would say, like I told the last person, like, just keep checking in with yourself and making sure that all your needs are being met. Yeah. And that you're, you're prioritizing yourself in some capacity because you deserve it. And I don't want you to get lost, um, in the sauce of being a parent and then, um, ignoring your wants and needs because those also matter even after you give birth, but got more than enough time, babe. More than enough time. yeah. Yeah. Congrats. You just pushed a human out. Congratulations. That's insane. Okay, we're going to end with this one. I wish I could find it, but honestly, a lot of you asked the exact same question, which is how do I set boundaries with people? Girl, I don't fucking know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll use us as a good... I don't know. We'll do us as a good example. Because I feel like we're really good now, I think. Oh, with each other? With each other. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Well, because this is like tangible for them. Gotcha. So like... We were just talking about this and I cried about it talking. We were talking about our boundaries Mm -hmm. and Drew was saying, I feel like you don't maintain your boundaries, which I've also told Drew and she also cried about Yeah, because it's something, you know, you're not doing for sometimes you don't even realize like I, like I told y'all, I thought being confrontational was holding boundaries and it's not, they're two very different things. Yeah. So I let people cross my boundaries all the time. Yeah. So, so uh, Drew wanted to go to the mall yesterday to go shopping for some stuff for vacation. Yes. And I was so stressed about cleaning my house for my sweet little grandpa to come stay at while I'm out of town. Mm-hmm. And I, she was like, come on, it'll be fun. And I said, I really want to stay home because it's really important to me that I clean my house. And she said, okay. <laughs> that's how we did it but she's done it with me too we've, we've yeah. had bigger ones too where i'm like i don't like when you, that yeah. happens or whatever you know? i think how do you how do you start um check in uh, like literally ask yourself what are my boundaries mm-hmm. like it's sometimes it's hard to differentiate them or to identify them and diagnose them so first like for example like uh my therapist actually um gave me a, a worksheet Ooh, okay um on how to communicate boundaries. <laughs> Nothing is more embarrassing than when they give you those worksheets and you have to fill them out. Yeah. Like mine was like irrational thoughts. What's one you have? And I have to write on there that everyone thinks I'm ugly. How embarrassing to write that. <laughs> you read it and you're like, I'm such a silly goose. <laughs> what the hell is wrong? I'm such a, just a girl at the end of the day. I'm literally just a girl. I'm literally Sorry. just a teenage girl. So she gave I'm you, not. she gave you, um, a worksheet. Okay. And it had like, it, it had tangible examples on it of boundaries being compromised versus boundaries, um, being met. Right. Ooh, okay. Okay. And like Give one, exa- one. one example was, um, someone asking you to drive them to the airport. Mm hmm. So they ask you to drive them to the airport. However, I think I did this worksheet too. However, you have something to do that is, that is important to you. Mm -hmm. And so in compromising the boundary and it's a loved one, it's like someone that you love and care about. Okay. So I'm asking you. Yeah. They ask me for a favor. Okay. And you know, if you take them, you're going to be late Mm -hmm. and you don't want to be late and you don't want to cancel, but you don't want them to be mad. More important to me. But at the same time, (laughs) You want them to know that you care about them mm-hmm. and you do want to take them to the airport. However, it just falls on the wrong day. Yeah. So one situation you tell them, okay, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. I'll, I'll take you to the airport and you just compromise your own boundary. Yes. What that ends up doing is you, first of all, you're angry when you agree to it, mm-hmm. which is always, you're irritated. As soon as you hang up the phone, you're mm-hmm. irritated. But then you start to grow this resentment towards them. So you're like, the next time they go to the trip, they're, I'm never taking them to the airport <laughs> ever again. And you put this unrealistic expectation on them, even though they have no idea that you have something it's you want to do. It's technically your fault. Yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily your fault. Um, nece- I mean, cause it's not your fault that they asked, but it is. No, I'm saying it's your fault that you agreed to do it. Yeah. That you didn't communicate. Yeah. Um, so, cause it doesn't make you a bad person for asserting a boundary. And that's the difference. Mm-hmm. That's the differentiator. Um, so the second 
scenario is you tell them, I would love to take you to the airport. However, I do have something I need to do. So if you want me to take you, then we need to leave at this time. But if you want to leave later, then I can't take you. So it's like you give them options. First, you tell them that you care about them, which Mm -hmm. is important. Because for me, I suffer from really terrible, irrational thoughts about my family thinking I fucking hate them if I don't want to do something. Mm -hmm. So like, no matter how many times they tell me, it's okay if you don't want to do it. I'm like, they're mad at me. Uh, (laughs) And my family's the, don't get it twisted, my family is the only people I care about that. Anyways. So, and you assert up front that you do want to help them. But then at the same time, you also assert that you have something that's non-negotiable. Okay. Right. So you give them options and that helps both of you make a measured decision. Mm-hmm. So then they'll be like, Oh, okay, great. I, I actually can leave at that time. Or they'll be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you had plans. Right. Um, I'll ask somebody else to take me. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the hardest part is you accept the answer and you don't offer to take them. If the answer is, I can't leave at that time, I'll ask somebody else. You just say, okay, um, let me know if it works out. And that's it. You don't apologize. Oh, I was going to say, no, I would have put, I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't apologize. You can if you want, but my therapist says that that builds bad habits when you apologize for things that you didn't do. Like Ed Sheeran? <laughs> the song Bad Habits. Oh, I didn't get that. As I a sheer head, I should have known. I, know. I thought you were saying don't. Isn't that the name of that song? He has a song called Bad Habits, yeah. Oh, okay. He has a, also has a song called Don't. There you go. Anyways. Um, so like it's it's the hardest part for me is um accepting the answer after I assert the boundary. Yeah. So like I tell them, okay, okay, like they tell me, okay, I'll ask somebody else. And then I go, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm really, really sorry. And they're like, it's okay. And I'm like, actually, you know what? I can take you. That's what I end up doing every or I'll time. Go, well, I can take you, but I could probably find someone else who can't. <laughs> Okay. My therapist, like on the worksheet, it literally says, okay, next time, hopefully I can take you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You leave it like that. And then you remind yourself that you are also worthy of boundaries. Like you're also worthy of your needs being met. My therapist always tells me like, um, we start to like have these like freak outs or like stress or anything like that when our needs are constantly not being met. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So like when they're constantly being unfulfilled yeah. and compromised, um, see, okay. This is like, this blew my fucking mind when she first told me, but she was like, your fear is coming off as like selfish or mean or entitled or whatever. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And then she goes, okay. Or like uh, rude or whatever. Oh, yeah. When your needs are constantly being crossed or, or un, un, not met, they're, they're not, their boundaries are being Acknowl- crossed. Unacknowledged, yeah. Yeah, like you're just constantly unfulfilled in mm-hmm. that way. You end up churning into the person that you're afraid that mm-hmm. you're coming off as because then you start getting bitter. So you start getting snippy. You get like irritated. Like let's say you go and pick them up from the airport and you're like, you get stuck in traffic and then you're in a bad mood and then you're talking shit. And it's just like, it it turns this, the whole energy sour. Mm. And then it's like, why'd you take me if you knew I had something to do? And if, if you had something to do, why did you offer to take me? Cause then you start taking it out on that person and they don't even know. Right. Mm -hmm. So she, she blew my mind and she was like, if you really think about it, you end up turning into the person that you're so afraid of coming off as when you compromise your own boundaries because your needs are being met. So then you are upset. And you can't express how upset you are because it's not their fault, right? It's, it's kind of on you. And so I was like, <laughs> just, just, mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow. wow. Um, since Common. you got your degree and you think you know every fucking thing. <laughs> That's what I tell you. But um, anywho, I would say to practice that way, right? And also explain it, you. It, I think you. Um, we overlook communication a lot of times. Mm. Like expressing if if these people really love you and care about you, and they also care about your needs, expressing that you have some, or expressing your boundaries and saying like, "Hey, yeah, I'm trying to be better about expressing my boundaries." So that's what we say to each other. I'm a work in progress. I'll tell you that much. Shut up. <laughs> Well, like I, I like, I wish I had a better answer for you, but I am actively working on that. We currently. both are. Yeah. Uh, if you have the means to do so, uh, therapy 
is a huge, huge, huge reason why I've gotten better at, at working on it. Um, not quite there yet, but I am working on it. So mm -hmm. that's my advice. Hopefully it uh, helps. I always think like if you're doing something you don't want to do, you can't get mad because you said you would you do it. You agreed to do it. You agreed yeah. to do it. So I can't be mad at Drew because I told her I would take her to the airport. Yeah. Even if but I, you end up being mad. Yeah. Anyways, you can't fight it because you're upset because your boundaries are being crossed mm -hmm. and you didn't assert them. But you didn't communicate that. So yeah. I can't be mad at Drew. I exactly. should be mad at the man in the mirror. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Listen, you got two long ones in a row. I'm sorry. And we're going on vacation, and this is all I had in me, okay? <laughs> I have nothing left. I had two breakdowns in the last 24 hours. <laughs> Anyways, looking forward to vacation. <laughs> But I also want to say congratulations to all the grads. We keep saying that almost every episode, but I'm genuinely so excited for all of you that are graduating Yeesh. and moving on to adult things. Very excited for you. Yeesh. If you enjoyed this episode, you could stream all audio episodes of this every week and listen to podcast. And the video version is always on our YouTube channel. We will have a new prompt on our Instagram. So go make sure you look out for that. But other than that, we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.